The eastern United States has its fair share of orb-weaving spiders, many of which reach large sizes, have beautiful patterning, and are some of the most recognizable arachnids in this region. However, our native orb weavers might be in trouble. As we speak, an invasive spider from across the world is crawling its way through the eastern US, and we need your help to understand the impacts that it's having on local ecosystems. Let's unravel the facts and fiction behind one of the most infamous spiders in recent history the Joro spider. My name is Ben Zeno, and my mission is to inspire you to get outside and discover the amazing wildlife that's all around us. And spiders really are all around us. Especially at this time of year, in the late summer or early fall, so many of our native species are achieving their maximum sizes and are more visible now than they will be in any other season, including the invasive species that we're currently searching for. And it isn't long until I spot a large yellow spider. But is it the species that we're looking for? This is one of our native orb-weaving spiders. This is the black and yellow garden spider, otherwise known as the riding spider. And you can see why, because here, right under where it's sitting, you can see there's this zigzag pattern woven into its web, and that's called stable momentum. And that structure, that stable momentum, is also what gives the riding spider that common name, because it kind of does look like riding. Now, these are some of the most familiar orb weaving spiders around our homes at this time of year, and they have nearly a 100% range overlap with the invasive Joro spider. But there are a few really easy ways to tell these species apart. For one thing, the webbing itself is overall a very clean, tidy, and orderly web with those stable momentum. And another way you can tell the difference between these two spiders if you're looking at one in its web, if we look at the spinneret of this black and yellow garden spider, we will actually see basically no coloration difference from the rest of its body. While it's in my hand, you can see it has a black and yellow, almost bumblebee-like patterning to the abdomen. And those colors, specifically the black and yellow, are not what we will see on our drawer spiders if we're able to find one. Now, despite being introduced into the United States in 2014, drawer spiders had not been sighted in North Carolina until these last couple of years. And today I'm searching an area where there are no documented cases of drawer spiders occurring. But I have my suspicions that they might be in this area because I've seen other large orb weaving species using this habitat. As I continue searching for suspiciously large spider webs, I'm reminded of the origins of the Joro spider's common name, the Japanese yokai, the Joro Gumo. This mythological spider can transform its shape into that of a beautiful woman and lure men into her web where she then consumes them. And I might be about to find out if there's any truth to this myth, as I spot a large and oddly shaped spider web up ahead. And this web right here is potentially the spider that I'm looking for. It has a really weird kind of leg to body size ratio. The web design is also different, so there's a bunch of suspicious stuff going on. And I really do think this is an immature Joro spider. And if it is, this is a county record. Got it. It's a Joro, it's a Joro, look. Oh, oh my gosh. Is exactly what we were looking for. An invasive species right here. I mean, 10 minutes from my house. Wow, the crutch is actually pretty effective for catching spiders. All right, let me go ahead and um, see if I can get it in the jar. Yeah, that's crazy. I can't believe we just, I mean, that just happened. While searching for a good filming location, I spot yet another Joro spider web, but this one is much larger than the first. Okay, so we spotted a mature adult in that web over there. Now just to find a way to get to it without furthering to destroy my ankle. One, two, three. Yeah, got her, got her, got her. Oh, there she goes. There she is. <sighs> okay, now just to get her in the jar. Got her. Now in this jar right here, I have not one, but two of the spiders that I've been searching for for the past several weeks. These are the invasive Joro spider. Now at first glance, this spider looks very similar to a species that I featured on the channel before, the golden silk spider. And that's because Joro spiders and golden silk spiders, they're actually in the same genus. So while they're in the same genus, these species are geographically separated by almost the entire Earth. There are now records of drawer spiders traveling, I believe, as far north as New York, which is quite impressive. And there's a variety of ways that these spiders can disperse. They can disperse as adults by crawling up into vehicles and hopping off down the road. 
But as babies, they are also capable of balloon dispersal, which is when these spiders are extremely small, they will actually emit a kind of parachuting strand of silk. They will then use to basically ride the wind and they can travel hundreds of miles when they're ballooning as babies. Now, at maximum size, adults of this species can be about one inch in body length and about three inches in leg span, which is about as large as one of the most common native orb weaving spiders that we have here in the Eastern US, the black and yellow garden spider. Now we can infer that these spiders are competing with our native orb weavers for prey and for web building spaces, but we don't know that for sure. There's absolutely no studies about Joro spiders as an invasive species. So there's actually a really easy way that you can help out with our understanding of this invasive species. And that's by searching for them and uploading your observations to a citizen science app called iNaturalist. And all you need to make an observation is a geotagged photo of what you think might be a Joro spider. So to identify a Joro spider, I'll give you a few tips. For one thing, they have very large webs. They can stretch several meters across actually. And the silk of their webs tends to be pretty disorganized compared to other large orb weaving spiders that live in the area. And the other thing you'll notice about their silk is it actually has a golden hue to it, just like their close relatives, the native golden silk spider. You're usually going to have yellow and blue bands on the back of the abdomen, but if you're actually looking at the underside of the abdomen of these spiders, you'll notice that there's also a distinctive red patch near the spinnerets. And that is a dead giveaway that you are looking at a Joro spider and not a golden silk spider if you're in an area where those two species overlap. Now, the one good thing about Joro spiders, despite the fact that they are invasive, is like our other orb weavers, these have a very mild venom that is designed to paralyze small winged insects, not to hurt humans. So you don't have to be scared of these spiders, but we do need your help reporting them. So go ahead right now, if you have a minute, download the iNaturalist app, head out to your backyard or local park and see if you can find this invasive spider. If you enjoyed learning about the Joro spider, be sure to check out this video where I encounter one of North Carolina's strangest native spiders that just might be hiding in your backyard. Here's your sneak peek at the species that will be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. I'll see you next time, but until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.